Hello and welcome to a brand new vlog. Technically I'm not done filming the last vlog yet. Um, Logan ran up to the farm to help my stepdad work on a mower, I believe it was this morning. Um, so when he gets back we still have to run and pick up the rock so I can finish the last vlog. Um, but in the meantime this morning we did take my car to Lowe's and picked up 10 bags of soil and six bags of compost. So I'm able to start filling my garden beds. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is actually fill in the holes in the blocks. Um, I want to make sure those get good and topped off. And then we'll see how much, because I'm sure 10 bags is not going to be enough. I figure I'm probably going to need about 20. But this is all that would fit in my car at one time. And I also just didn't want to, you know, end up doing complete overkill. So I thought we'd see how far this gets me and then decide for sure how many more bags I need to get. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started with this. I'm going to open a couple of these bags and mix it with some sand that I have and start filling up those holes. So without further ado, let's get to the garden. Hi, Miss Emily. <laughs> All right, so these beds, I've already put sand about a third of the way or so up in these. So all I need to do then is add the soil. And this bag I've already got back here because it got snagged pulling it out of the car, so it's already got a rip. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this one open and just start filling up the rest of these holes. And then I'm going to mix, and then I'll move on and do those. And then I'll save the double stacked blocks over there for last because it's going to need the most soil. So. Good morning. <laughs> okay, so I'm done filling the first bed. I have the other two yet to go and one of them is the deep bed and it's gonna need a lot. So I've figured up I probably need another 13 bags of soil and honestly, my body is absolutely spent <laughs> after this week. So 42 concrete blocks that weigh about 30 pounds a piece. Um, so far, 10 bags of soil that weigh about 25 pounds a piece, probably more like 30, honestly, because some of them were kind of wet. Um, and then 20 bags of rock, which I don't know for sure what the weight is on those, but I'm going to guess probably 15 to 20 pounds. That was a little less than the bags of soil, but still fairly heavy. So, um, 
my body is just done. Like my muscles are not sore or anything. They're just weak. Um, I mean, I guess that's the bonus of fitness and that's why I do work out. I obviously, I don't care about weight or anything because being plant-based, my weight is just kind of naturally healthy anyway. But as we age, our muscles deteriorate. And a few years ago, <clears throat> I noticed that anytime I had to do something, my whole, like my arms would be sore, my hands would even be sore. And I was like, man, I just, I can't, as I'm getting older, I need to be able to remain independent and be able to do stuff like this without having somebody do it for me. Um, that's just the independent streak in me, I guess. So I was like, I've got to, I've got to get into a workout regimen that's going to stick. And so for two years now, I have been regularly working out. And honestly, my number one workout is yoga, which I do five days a week. And I know a lot of people think that yoga is just flexibility, but honestly, it takes more strength than anything else. People who do yoga are incredibly strong. They have to be. Um, so I do that. And then also I do some weight bearing exercise too on Tuesdays and Thursdays, because that helps with bone mass, um, helps keep your bones from deteriorating as you age. So uh, load bearing or weight bearing exercise is important as well. But anyway, all of that to say that my muscles are not sore. Not a single muscle in my body is sore and I feel perfectly fine, but they're just weakened now and I can't lift what I was. Like yesterday I was throwing around those 25 pound bags of soil like a sack of potatoes and today I went to lift one and I could barely pick it up and I finally like the last three I lugged them onto this lawn cart back here and dragged them around the house. <laughs> And so um, I asked Michael if he would please be ever so kind as to go back to the store. Because I was going to just go to Lowe's and get all of the remaining bags of soil I needed by myself. But I was like, man, there is no way I am lifting 13 bags of soil by myself today. I just can't. And so he's going to go with me and help me with that. And then later on, once Logan is up, which honestly, so last night was winter ball. So he was out a little late. He got home about midnight, which normally is curfew's 11, but you know, obviously special circumstances, I gave him an extra, uh, an extra hour. But so once he's up, which will probably end up being more like 10 or so, cause even on late nights, he just isn't a late sleeper. Um, but I'll have to have him probably help me lift the bags into the garden beds because uh, my body's just done with it. So um, anyway, I am going to get these beds filled today, come hell or high water. And then I have uh, two trellis arches and I need to order a third one now that I think about it because my best friend and I, like we um, share each other's Amazon wish lists, And so I'll order her something for Christmas off of hers and she orders me something off of mine. So she ordered me one of the trellises this year and then the other one I had already bought. So I still need to buy one more and I'm going to put those down the center here. And then this thing I was going to get rid of and I was going to build a cold frame with an old window that I had, or actually I have two old windows and I was thinking about doing two cold frames. I just don't know that I need to. Um, but I was looking at that yesterday and honestly the windows were smaller than I remembered them being. Um, so I decided to scrap that idea, which means like this pile of lumber back here, I can just go ahead and get rid of because that's what I was saving it for. It's not treated lumber. It's from an old tomato cage and you don't want to use pressure treated lumber in if you're doing like raised bed gardening or anything like that. Don't use pressure treated lumber because it's treated with chemicals and you don't want those chemicals getting into your soil and then into your vegetables. So since it was not treated, it lasted about four or five years and then the parts that were down in the soil started to rot. So I took it all apart and I saved the stuff that was not rotten and that's what I was going to use to go ahead and build the cold frames and figured I'd get another couple years out of that. But now that I'm scrapping that idea, I can just go ahead and take that lumber out to the farm too and toss it on the burn pile. <clears throat> and then this thing, the I can link this below. I always get them on Amazon. Um, the plastic though that's on them only lasts really one season. You can get two out of it if you're good and lucky, but like it starts to dry out and it cracks. Um, but I have painter's plastic. You can buy like a giant sheet of painter's plastic and I'm just going to use that to cover it. And I'm going to take this top part off, I think, and just cover from here down because all that's going to be growing in it is lettuces. So it's nothing that's going to get super tall and it makes it easier for me to access without this in the way. So I am gonna do that and I'm gonna wrap it all up. I probably won't do that part today though because I'm not ready to plant anything in here for another couple of weeks yet, so I don't really care. But I did decide to keep this and it's back in place, so. And now I am going to head out with Michael, gotta do a little bit of shopping for him and then we're gonna run and get my soil and then I'll be back to finish this up.
she's all done. Soil is in, rocks are in. This one, I bought uh, 13 bags. I was planning on putting eight in here, three in here, and then having a couple extra, and it ended up taking all 11 of what was left after I filled this bed. And it looks like it could still use a couple. So I'm just gonna let the soil settle for a little bit. I am definitely not buying any more today because my muscles are done. And since I only need a couple bags, I don't wanna have to you know, ask anybody to go with me for that. I can do that by myself. Um, so, Still need to do that, but otherwise we are finished and ready for planting. One thing <laughs> that I did actually just think about here a couple minutes ago. So I have those trellises that are gonna go here. And so you're basically gonna have like a little tunnel to walk between. And one of the things that whenever I designed this the way that I did, I wanted the beds to be workable because with this thing, the way that it was designed, it had plastic over it that only opened on one side. And so you couldn't hardly reach anything in the back. You'd have to like step inside of the thing to reach it. So I wanted these beds to be accessible all the way around. And I realized that I have kind of uh, prevented myself from doing that by putting the trellises up because now I won't be able to access this side. Um, so I'm gonna have to work around the other three edges and I'll probably still have to end up stepping into the bed to get to like the center back, whatever is in there. But it is definitely still the way to go because um, I've got peas in the spring and then I'm gonna have cucumbers and I believe butternut squash is what I decided on. And so for stuff like that, that vines, it is so much better to have space for it to grow up so it stays out of your garden and doesn't inhibit anything else from growing. And also those kinds of things are prone to squash bugs. And I feel like the more they spread out on the ground, the more invasive those bugs are as opposed to when they're growing up. So <sighs> hopefully we will have success this year without too many critters <laughs> getting into my stuff. Present company excluded, Miss M. Ember. Kitty, kitty, you want to come say hi? <laughs> yeah, that's my old lady. Oh, yeah, it's a good girl. Say, I was all kinds of curious about what mom was doing with the soil here just a little bit ago. Ugh. But next step is going to be putting those trellises together, which I will probably start here in a little bit. I actually want to go do a little bit of editing. Looks like I still have my shovel back there I need to put away, too. That's the one thing I missed. Hello, Miss M. Are you going to help me put these arches together? <sighs> oh, say thank God for sunshine. It's chilly, but it doesn't feel too bad in the sun, does it? <sighs> All right, I'm going to work on getting these arches together. This is the smaller one, so I'm going to set it aside. And we're going to start with this one. So I got one, and I don't remember anymore because it's been so long now since I bought it, but I think it was somewhere around five-ish feet wide. But my planting bed over there is not long enough to use two of these. So I'm doing one, and then I had to get two that are shorter, um, which I do still have to buy one of them. But I'm going to go ahead and get this one up. And once it's up, then I'll work on the second one and then kind of gauge from there and make sure that I've measured correctly and that I do have room for another. And if that's the case, I'll go ahead and get the last one ordered. But anyhow, let's get started on this.
I don't like about this one is the bottoms have to be spread really far apart in order for the height to be even close. So I'm thinking I will probably take the bottom row or the bottom rungs off of both of those and go ahead and sit it in the ground that way. I definitely don't want it to be sticking out as far in here as it is because I need to be able to cover this with plastic for when the greens are growing. It doesn't matter later in the season, but early on, I definitely need that to be different. Um, let me just go ahead and do that now. I don't want to leave it like this and come back to it later. Let's just get it done. Well, <laughs> not sure that really helped. I think it's just too wide, period. The top of it, it you can't really do anything about that. Um, but I think at least this way it's easier to pull the sides all the way in. So I'll probably leave it like that. I know height wise, I have plenty of room to fit under it. Michael might have to duck a little bit, but he would anyway because this bar right here, but honestly, this isn't his garden, so <laughs> it doesn't even matter. I fit just fine, so I will probably leave it like that, and I do need to get one more to go here at the end. All right, there she is, all complete. And this is the first time since I have moved into this house back in 2017 that I have a garden that I feel like is permanent and I feel like is everything that I want it to be. Um, this yard is the first time in my life that I've ever had to deal with all of this. So growing here is a challenge because you definitely need adequate sunlight to grow, especially things like tomatoes um, and squash and cucumbers. Um, they really like a lot of sunlight and I took sunlight for granted because I never had this issue before I lived here. And so it has been a struggle to find the best place in my yard during the most important, like the height of the growing season, basically June and July. Um, this, finally, I figured out that this little strip here gets about seven to eight hours of sunlight a day. And so the tomatoes I had last year, I just put them there and they were all in pots. And then I had that over it just to kind of test and see how they did. And it was the first time that I've had a good crop of tomatoes here. Um, so I really feel confident that this is gonna be the best place for this garden. And so this is going to be permanent. And I'm really happy with the way this has turned out. And I am excited for the gardening season. So I will have some early spring vegetables in here and here. And then about mid-April, 1st of May, I will be swapping it out and putting in summer vegetables. So I'll have, like that's my tomato bed, I'll have beans in this one, some squash and bell peppers in this one. I'm gonna do sweet corn in the greenhouse, um, which I can show you that real quick too. And the reason I'm doing that is because here in the Midwest, our temperatures are pretty volatile and we get some pretty hot summers, like July and August, it gets into the 90s here. So inside this greenhouse is just like sweltering hot. We did tomatoes in here last year and it stunted them. They stopped fruiting all the way up until the cooler season in the fall. So I'm not gonna do that again. So I'm gonna do sweet corn in here because that is like one crop I could find that really, really loves the heat and will do well with the heat. So sweet corn in there until fall. And then um, that pot right there, I'm gonna get one more and there's gonna be tomatoes in that. And so I will have two different kinds. Well, I think actually both are gonna be brandy wine, but two different tomato plants that I will then be able to relocate into the greenhouse in the fall. And so this year, the tomato plants we did have in there, they produced all the way up until we had a hard freeze in January. Um, so, Michael absolutely loves tomatoes. Like he is obsessed with tomatoes. So he would love to have them year round unless you have like a fancy heated greenhouse, it's just not possible. But he was pretty ecstatic that we got them all the way up into January. So this is the garden. And I am really looking forward to seeing what happens. Are you Miss Emily? Are you excited for the garden this year? Or are you gonna eat my plants? <laughs> Good baby. And kind of just for a little bit of a backstory about me, I have been gardening my entire life, literally my entire life. I grew up out in the country um, in a much smaller town, about 30 miles north of here. And, you know, I grew up with a garden at my house. I stayed with my grandparents in the summer whenever I was out of school and my parents were working. And, 
you know, both of my grandparents were raised on farms. Um, so, you know, they gardened all the way up until basically they got old enough that they just couldn't handle doing it anymore. And then they canned like green beans and tomatoes. And so they did all the stuff. So I spent my entire life growing up with the garden as soon as I had my first place of my own, which I was married early. I was married at 19 or eight. Yeah, I was 19 when I got married and 19 when I had my first child and 21 when I had my second. And a lot of things have changed in my life since then, including who I'm married to. But um, at any rate, so we bought our first house when I was 19 and um, always had a garden, always, always had a garden. Um, I never did raised bed gardening. It was always till the earth, um, you know, plant rows. That's how I was raised. That's how I continued to do it until I came here. And it was mainly the challenges with the sun in this yard. Cause I've never had that problem before. Every house I've had has had a nice big open yard without a lot of trees. So I don't think I really even knew or understood how important adequate sunlight was because I had never experienced a yard that didn't have it until I lived here. So um, that has been a challenge. I have been battling it ever since I bought this house in 2017. And this is the first year that I feel really confident that I have found the right spot and that I'm going to do well. Um, but I have, because of the challenges that I have had with the gardening and then also lack of a tiller really too because you need to have a good big tiller and when I lived out in the country I had a neighbor that had a tractor that he would just come down and till it up for me and then when I moved into I bought my first house in town in my last town um, I don't even remember somebody came over and tilled it for me and I think it was one of my grandma's siblings probably or a nephew or something but anyway then I moved here and I don't know anybody that has a tiller. I mean, this is definitely a little bit more, it's still a small-ish town. It's around 40,000 people. So, but it's more urban than where I was at before for sure. And my family's not here. And, you know, I have some friends here, but nobody that has ever, like, it's, it's very, very town here for sure. Um, there are some country areas right outside of town, but they're not very good. Most of the, like, I would love to live just outside of town and have a couple of acres and everything, but the only places where you can really buy here, it's all subdivided and it's the fancier houses that are there. So it's HOAs and they want to control everything you do and to be able to even garden the way that I like to garden, you've got to get special permission and I'm not going to live in a place like that. So the odds of me ever living outside of town again are just kind of slim just because we're so limited on options around here. Um, but with that said, that's a lot of the reason why I can't access a tiller. And I've also learned a lot um, just joining social media and watching YouTube videos and watching TikToks. And I've learned a lot about gardening that even gardening my entire life, I never knew. For one thing, I never did seed starting until last year. It was my first year. I always just bought plants from a nursery and stuck them in the ground. And then... Um, in addition to that, you know, I always, I was raised doing the old school method. So things just like no-till gardening, I didn't even know about it until um, just last year. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things that I'm still learning that I never knew before. And I feel like this is one of those things where you never stop learning. There are always going to be changes. There are always going to be new discoveries and so many people doing things in so many different ways that there's no end to methods that you can try. And so gardening communities are great, especially online because you have access to so much information. Um, and I'm really, really grateful for that, um, especially since this is, you know, a new method of gardening for me, doing raised bed gardening and starting from seed and um, dealing with the challenges with the sunlight and pest control that I never had to worry about before. I feel like for whatever reason, in this town, there are pests that like, I didn't have snails. I didn't have slugs. I didn't have really pulleys. I didn't have squash bugs. Like I never had anything to worry about outside of maybe rabbits eating my green beans, even the squirrels here. Like I lived in town before, but we weren't surrounded by trees like I am here. And so I didn't have very many squirrels. And this is the first place I've been where I couldn't get a crop of tomatoes because the squirrels would steal them immediately before they, like I would have a small green tomato and it would already be gone. Um, so just all kinds of challenges here that I never had before. So it's been really, really nice to discover new gardening communities and gardening channels where I learn new things that I get to try. And this has very much been a trial and error garden ever since I moved here. And again, I feel confident that this is going to be the first year that I really have a great garden that is everything that I want it to be under the circumstances that I am in for growing conditions. So 
I don't know, if you want to see what happens, I guess follow along with me and we might have to learn some things together. But um, I look forward to the garden season and I thank you very much for being here with me.